Game five is Sunday in the Bay. That's where we're headed. But for now, we're at the Music Box, a supper club in the flats. Um, we put Steve Kerr on the hook earlier this week. We said he needed to make some adjustments so that the Warriors could get back into this series. Uh, they did make those necessary adjustments. However, he was asked about the changes that were made, and listen to what he had to say. My options were tell the truth, and I was asked both at shoot around and before the game. Um, which, so if I tell the truth, it's the equivalent of me knocking on David Blatt's door and say, "Hey, this is what we're going to do." I could evade the question, which would start this, you know, Twitter phenomenon. Who's going to start for the Warriors? Uh, or I could lie, so I lied. Sorry, but I don't think they hand you the trophy for based on uh, morality. They they give it to you if you win. So sorry about that. All right. So Steve Kerr admitting he lied for strategic purposes. Stephen A. The question is. How much credit do you think he deserves for the win last night? Well, I think he deserves a lot of credit. He's the head coach. Um, Andre Iguodala being inserted into the starting line that was clearly the difference that was made. Uh, some 28-year-old, you know, coordinator that's on the team made the suggestion. They listened to him. Um, but ultimately, when you're the head coach, you're the one who makes the call. Um, and if it had not worked, we'd be blaming him. So, therefore, we deserve he deserves a lot of credit for it. Um, I also wanted to veer left in this regard. I want us to keep in mind that him admitting that he lied, uh, I think, you know, that's why I like Steve Kerr. Because he could have lied and then said absolutely nothing. You know, and then people are looking at a reporter who may have reported something, uh, you know, whether it was Tim, what, Tim Kawakami? Kawakami. Kawakami, yeah. you know, he's a very good writer, very good reporter for years. He used to work at the Los Angeles Times. San actually, Jose Mercury in News. In San Jose Mercury News. I mean, he does, he does a fabulous job. Uh, but, but, you know, when you sit up there and you're willing to come public and explain your deception and why, that's also an honest way of talking about your job and what responsibilities came with it and how you had to engage in deception in that regard. I can't tell you how many coaches would have left that reporter hanging. I can't tell you how many coaches would have left an abundance of reporters hanging mm-hmm. when they lied to us all the time. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, sit up there and be like, you know, this guy's unethical. This guy's this. This guy's that. When they were the ones being unethical and they were the ones lying, whether it's a coach, a GM, an owner, a player or whatever the case may be because you know the media is always to blame. We are. So the fact that Steve Kerr came out there and was honest enough Mm -hmm. to explain himself, unsolicited I might add, I give him an awful lot of credit. It just just exemplifies the level of class that he has. But he obviously made the right move in starting Andre Iguodala because they said Cleveland does, they may have size, but they don't have depth. And big boys usually can't run with the little dudes. So let's sit there and throw a bunch of little dudes at them and keep coming all night long. They will tire. And that's exactly what happened with Cleveland. I am with you on this one. In fact, I think Steve Kerr, whom we called out repeatedly over the last 48 hours on the show, harshly called him out. I think fairly, he, fairly. Fairly, but harshly. Right. I think he might deserve the most credit for what happened last night. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, Andre Iguodala had to reinforce that move by by coming up so huge on both ends of the floor, and he did. He was the star of the night on the floor. The star of the night off the floor on the bench was the guy I said who was starting to be sitting on a hot seat, Steve Kerr. And a, a couple of things. To your first point, he was honest about lying. How often do we see I don't know that I've ever seen honest about lying. I've seen it a couple of times. Larry Maybe. Brown. Larry Brown. Has he? Okay, yes. good. And then I love the fact that Steve Kerr volunteered that his video coordinator first suggested this move. How many coaches would have such a small ego that they could give credit to the 28-year-old video coordinator publicly in front of the gathered finals media mm-hmm. instead of taking all the credit himself because he's a first-year coach trying to make his way and his name in this league mm-hmm. and saying, yeah, I, I came up with that. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty smart. Yeah, and his staff would know, no, he really yeah. didn't. But he volunteered that. This is another reason I personally like him so much. So and do you I. Too. He's, so do he's, I. He's, a, he's a good guy. He's a good, good guy. Man. So he comes up with going small, starting Iguodala, 
running a second defender at LeBron, which we had not seen, and then how about Sean Livingston? He went with Sean Livingston down the stretch and played him every minute of the fourth quarter. Every minute, all 12 minutes. Total 25 for Sean Livingston. Because he's 6'8". He because he's 6'8". I, I don't know if he, they list him at 6'7". Maybe he is 6'8". He looks 6'8", he to me. And can defend. And he can defend, and he was able to shoot over Little Deli. There were maybe three different times mm -hmm. he rose up the way Steph can't rise up over Deli and made shots. Mm -hmm. Another great strategic move because they went big, small, as in we, we got a bunch of guards on the floor. Effectively, we have four guards on the floor, but one of them is, to your point, six feet, eight inches tall. And he can handle and he can defend because one time he made Delhi eat a shot. I mean, just flat out eat it, right? And they went the other way with it. So in the end, th this wasn't just series changing it was series saving these couple of moves the three or four moves that he made and remember what gumption it took what guts it took they started off down seven to zero and it looked like tristan thompson was the modern day wilt chamberlain just dominating inside because draymond couldn't deal with them and nobody can cover it's like mozgov and here comes tristan tristan and it looked like they were going to get mauled on the boards they did pretty much get mauled on the offensive boards because it was 16 to 6 but overall rebounds they fought that they scrapped we saw some we saw the warriors play like literal warriors for the first time in this series little quick story. I remember a few uh, years ago when the Pistons were making their title run, Larry Brown was coaching them when they beat the Lakers. Um, they were going up against the Nets, if I remember correctly. Uh, it was the Nets, Richard Jefferson, Kenyon Martin, all of those boys. They came back uh, and won three straight. And the next thing you know, they were on the verge of beating the Pistons. And Larry Brown had the Pistons in the locker room down 3-2 and literally gave them this speech about there's nobody that can beat us four straight. There's nobody that can do X, Y, and Z with us. And they were talking about how no matter what level of belief they had in themselves, it elevated exponentially when they saw this little man sitting in there in front of their yeah. face telling them, reminding them who they were, how great they were, and what they could do. And I bring, the, I bring that up because the other day when Golden State was down 2-1, I saw no sense of panic on the face of Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr had the attitude, we're better than this team. What do y'all think this is? He was in the huddle when they played sound of him and said, you're better than this. Play like it. You are better than this. And you just got the sense before Draymond Green and Steph Curry and Andre Iguodala and all of these boys stepped up. You got the sense that the coach had beat them to it by reminding them this team, regardless of the fact that they have the best player in the world, are not mm -hmm. better than us. Yep. And they came out last night and played like it. Give so, them credit. Bottom line. These Golden State Warriors have impressed me, both coach and players, on mental toughness yes. because they're down two games to one at Memphis, having to play a game four on the road. We know the rest of that story. Steph scores 21 in the first half, and they're up by 16 and just ran away with that series. And then they're down two to one in the finals at LeBron. They're in LeBron's house. And it's two to two. Without a single player yep. in their squad having a title. Nope. They're showing up in big moments. Give him credit. Uh, Andre Iguodala was left open on 11 of his 15 shots last night, yep. shooting 46% on those looks. Wonder if he will start game five. Uh, when we come back, we talked about the cameraman. Some well known athletes are weighing in.